Man, I encourage everybody um, to whenever you come to church, whether it's this one or anyone, come with expectation. Like some of us came in here and was like, oh, I've seen the series online. I kind of agree. Church sucks. Let me just sit here and see what happens. But anytime you expect something, you, you get more out of it. And so I, I usually give people at least two minutes to reset your expectation. Because some of you is like, oh, they didn't play my song today. Or, oh, man, I got to sit next to him. Or whatever your thing is. But reset your expectation right now. Today God's going to speak to you. Today he's going to meet you right where you are. And today you'll never be the same. And today we're excited about what God's going to do as we go into this next part of the series called Church Sucks. And I know, again, for all of you that still um, have some attention of religion still on you, that offends you a little bit. And that's a little frustrating. But we didn't title this series for you. This, this series was not titled for those who want to be comfortable in the steeple. This is for the people. The people who are not here. The people who actually feel like when we say church sucks, they feel like there may be a little validity to that statement because of their experience. See, this series is for two reasons, and I want to help everybody understand that. We're doing this, number one, so that people who are followers of Christ... They can better understand what people may feel who have not had the great experiences that they have had. I think the church is one of the most uh, emotionally out of touch places sometimes because they, they think that, oh, we'll pray about it, just fixes everything. Or, oh, we'll be thinking about you. But people are walking through some real, how many people went through some real stuff this past year? Like some real, some real stuff. And, and what we have to understand is we have the solution, but don't judge a person while they're in the process. Because if you take a snapshot while they're in the midst of something, you may make a prejudgment that keeps you away from them. And, and so um, that's the first reason that us as believers, we get a better understanding. The second reason we're doing this series it's for every person who's been hurt before. For, for every person who's been in a church and leadership abused their power. For, for every person who has said, I know this is real, but nobody's acknowledged it. This series is to acknowledge your pain and your experience. And somebody say, why we need to acknowledge that? God makes all things new. You know, I really do believe that. But just like a physical wound, it's hard to heal when it's never been addressed. And people are walking around in churches, church hopping, going from place to place, got internet ministries and these ministries and those ministries. It's because nobody from a leadership position has ever addressed their wound. And today, on behalf of every person who may be in this place that has suffered at the hands of church hurt, whether they set you down from an area and didn't do it with proper communication, or you were able to do something in one season, but when somebody else came in, they put you to the side. Or you were immature in a season and you needed to be corrected, but they did it with no grace. I want to stand in proxy this morning for every person who was in a process and you were exploring and experimenting and somebody judged you at a pause point and made it who you were. I want to, with all the empathy that I can, can pull out of myself, I want to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you were hurt. I'm sorry that you were ostracized. I'm sorry that you did things that yielded people to judge you in a way that was unfair. And today, I want to pray for every person. See, there's some people in here who have buried hurt so far that they don't even know it's hurt anymore. That you, you thought that your, your tenacity to be great was just from a passion on the inside. It's really an insecurity that you're masking and you try to be better than everybody else because you never want anybody to see weakness. 
Because the last time they saw weakness, you got hurt. But today I came with the anointing of God to bless and heal those who have been wounded. Father, I pray if you need to be healed from any hurt that has been because of the church, I just want you to lift your hands. This is a transparent, open environment. I got some, okay? Father, I pray for every person that is under the sound of my voice. Father, who has been hurt by anything that has happened in church. And God, I ask you from the balm, for the balm of Gilead, the healing virtue of God to flow over people's life. I thank you that forgiveness would flow. I thank you, Father, that peace would flow. And God, I thank you that they would let it go. God, the excuses that we've made because somebody hurt us, today is the last day we let it go. And we thank you that you are the God who restores. And so everything that we thought was lost, you'll make it up in the name of Jesus. I thank you that we are healed healers in Jesus' name. If you believe it, why don't you give God a shout of praise in this place? If you don't believe it, why don't you praise for your neighbor? Healing. So let's just go a little deeper into this series today. Because I think God's going to reveal to us why church sucks to so many. And he's going to show us how we can be a major and significant part of changing it in the lives of so many people in our area of influence. So I drew a picture before service, okay? So I want everybody to look at this picture. I drew this picture, um, and, and I need y'all to just tell me what this is. I mean, just shout it out at me. What is this? It's a C? Okay, somebody else, what is it? What, that's not a C. What is it? Okay, it's, a, it's a half a circle. Uh, uh, it's a what? What would you say? Uh, okay, so this is the thing that I want everybody to see, because some people are yelling out, it's a horseshoe, it's a moon, it's a... okay. Let me, let me show you what it really is. It's a circle. And it was a circle when I asked you what it was, but it was incomplete. And because you only saw the part of the picture that I drew, you could not accurately tell me what you were looking at. This may be the most complete description of what the church looks like. Because what people see is our faith. But the picture is not complete. And so many times when they see our faith, but they don't see the other ingredient that makes it complete, they walk around with an image that is not able to be processed because we're not showing the real thing. But today I wanted to come to tell you that God is about to raise up a people that is going to complete the picture. Somebody say, complete the picture. I want you to write that down because this is the title of today's sermon. Complete the picture. Um, I, I started looking in James chapter 2. And, and most of everybody that's in here has faith. You wouldn't be coming to church if you didn't have faith. You, 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 you wouldn't be here. You have some type of faith. But the problem is, our faith is incomplete. And so I started to say, God, okay, what does that mean? Your faith is incomplete. My faith is incomplete. How do I make my faith complete? And God took me to James chapter 2, verse 21. And we're going to find out what makes our faith complete. It says, don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his, everybody yell it out at me, action. It says, when he offered his son Isaac on the altar, you see, his faith and his actions worked together and his actions made his faith, what? Complete. Let me help you understand something. You can have faith all day, but if you do not have corresponding actions, your faith is unfinished. And the reason that the church is looked at so jacked up because we have people that claim to be with God and their actions are in the club. We have people that will be, be, be um, talking about how we need to do people right, but we're cheating on our taxes. We have people that are talking about we need to ju not judge anybody, but as soon as somebody does something against you, you're behind the scenes talking about it. You don't have faith unless your actions line up with it. And for us... We have to complete this picture if you are a believer because the world is looking at an image 
that is not finished. Let me help you understand this. I, I wrote this down to help this go into your mind because in this next 30 minutes, I hope you see something that you've never seen before about yourself. That God is not waiting on a group of people to do something. He's waiting on you to allow what you believe and what you do to correspond to what you really, really say you want from God and what you really, really put your effort and energy in to be the same thing. Because he said at that moment, Kingdom comes. See, y'all waiting for something to happen. And God says, at the moment, what you say, if you would loose anything on earth, if you would bind anything on earth, it would be done in heaven. But you're loosing and binding things you won't even do. Y'all pray, mama pray. They, they, they just pray. Because I'm coming against religion. I'm coming against laziness. I'm coming against judgmentalism because it makes us feel better that we come to church. That we have a reading plan. That we pray that most of our friends are somewhat saved. Y'all know them somewhat saved friends. Y'all know. They don't cuss all the time, but if the situation gets too bad, they'll cuss you out. They, they got their anger to a moment, but then, you know, don't make, don't push me past this point because I forget that I was bought with the price past this point. And past this point, I'll do and say whatever my flesh says. So just don't get me to this point. How do you have a this point when God stretched his hand from point to point and said, I'm taking every Thing that you would have to be mad about, frustrated about, all that. And I'm giving you new reactions. I'm giving you and I'm working my character in you. You'll walk in love, joy, peace, even when the situation is ugly. He said, I'll give you meekness, which is power. I can rip this whole thing down, but it's under control. Woosah. Y'all y'all, got what I'm saying? So, so I want you to write this down. A partial pictures or partial pictures allow poor perspective. When you get a partial picture, you have poor perspective. What you see is wrong. And if you have poor perspective, it produces prejudice. I mean, this is so true in every area of life. But if you get a partial picture, then you get poor perspective. When you have poor perspective, it produces prejudice. Or what are those two words? Prejudgment. The reason why people think church sucks is because when they look at your life, they're getting a partial picture. They see your faith on your, God is doing everything and he, God is my plug and God will use me today. Be encouraged on your Instagram. But by the middle of the day, there are other things in your actions that are going contrary to what you say you believe. And so they have an incomplete picture. So when they have an incomplete picture, they think, oh, that's what a Christian is. Oh, that's what believers do. Oh, that's what Christ followers do. And so now they, are, now they are, have bad perceptions and now they prejudge. Well, if all church people are like that, or if, or, oh, that's how you handle people when they make a mistake. Do you know the church is the worst at throwing people away when they have public failures? I mean, we will disown. Oh, mm -mm, you was at my house last night. We was boys yesterday and then everybody founds out what happens. And instead of huddling around and being the church and restoring gently, like the word says, we disassociate. No, I didn't even know. I didn't even know him. Who? What? And so that's why people would rather join a gang because they know if it goes down, we're going to fight together. Instead of joining the church, because if it goes down, they're going to act like they didn't know me. Oh, y'all. Oh, man. Y'all hear how quiet it is when we're telling the truth? And so we have to get to a place where we complete the picture. Because if we complete the picture, then they get a proper perspective and they're able to make the right judgment. They'll look at the way that when we go into restaurants, that we don't have to say nothing. But when we sit down at a table, we treat the waitress with respect, even if she's horrible. Some of y'all are nasty. 
please just do not have your Transformation Church cards out at the restaurant when you're being nasty. See, because they look at you and you doing, mm, and you're doing all that. You don't know what that person went through. And maybe God set you in that section, and you know you don't need that burger anyway, but you sat in that section. Oh, okay. But you sat in that section because maybe God wanted them to have an encounter with the church, the organism and not the organization. That if somebody, they know they're doing a bad job, but if you could love them past their um, missing your drink order and past you um, not getting the food you like, maybe they would see the love of Jesus. But we, but we're going to be nasty and leave a 50 cent tip. I've seen it done. And you joking at the table with people you came to meet with. And like, no, (laughs) she just ruined her tip. It's over. Why are you going with this analogy? Because the Bible is not supposed to be lived out in the spiritual dome that nobody else lives in. It's supposed to be lived out in the world. And they are knowing who you are by your actions. And because we have had an incomplete picture, when somebody's going through something, we don't talk to them. When somebody's really, really needs something, we disappear. And God's saying, that's not what I created this thing for. I need you to be the reverse church. I need you to do opposite of what they think you would do. When they're hurting, you're there. When they're broken, you're putting the pieces back together. When they're lost, you're looking. You may not find them, but you're at least looking. So we have to complete the picture because partial pictures allow for poor perspective. When you have poor perspective, it produces prejudgment. Let me help you. Uh, go, go to my example. All y'all know this girl right here, okay? And I, this is Kim K. Um, Kim, if I ask you a question and I say, hey, um, who's Kim with in this picture? Okay, because this picture is partial, you have poor perspective. And because you have poor perspective, what are we left to do? Prejudge. Uh, we, we have to guess, suggest inquire who she's with. Now, if anybody knows, Kim K., she's had a few opportunities at looking for love. Okay? Which many of you have had too. Okay? So, no judgment at the foot of the cross. So, this picture could be Ray J. This could be Reggie. This could be Chris Humphreys. Do do, do you understand? Or James from our worship team. So, so. I see you with the upgrade, dog. Okay. But, but what I'm saying is, without a full picture, your perspective is bad, and you only prejudge because you don't know. Of course, everybody knows who it is. It's Kanye, okay? But until I completed the picture... You were not able to get a full view of what God is trying to say. So this is my challenge for you, is complete the picture. Not as Transformation Church, as everybody say your name. What's your name? I need you to say it like you know your name. What's your name? You're the church, and God's asking you to complete the picture. Let your faith and your actions Line up so that the picture is full and that people are able to see what God intended for the church to be. I want you to remember, because some of you are saying right now, well, I'm not a perfect person. Nobody is. In fact, the guy who started it all, who Jesus said, I'm going to build my church on you, it was Peter. He was an imperfect guy. He messed up all the time. He was not doing everything right. He even denied Jesus three times when he was on the cross. But when he came back, he said, I see something in you that I can use. And if you would not hide your imperfections but bring them to me, I'll use that and I'll build my church through you. That's the same thing I say to you this morning. Don't hide your imperfections. Bring them to God. Be the reverse church, and he will use you to complete the picture. Somebody say, complete the picture. 
Okay, so let's complete the picture. Point number one, your actions finish your faith. Your actions finish your faith. You can no longer give people a glimpse, preview, snippet, or a sample of what it means to be a Christian. You have to give them the full thing. So we can't just use Christianisms anymore and think that that makes our faith complete. Y'all know Christianism. Y'all know the things that we say that we're supposed to really believe, but we really don't show it. Stuff like we say, we're saved by grace. We're all saved by grace. But you can't be saved by grace and, and not put action in it and extend grace. See, many of us want the grace to be used for us, but we don't want to use the grace for anybody else. We have to have corresponding action. We say we're walking in purpose, but you got to see the fruit, bear fruit. That's the action. We say we care for the lost. Pastor Mike, we care for the lost. So then actually meet a need. We're the family of God, but you won't form relationships. It's all about people, but it's really all about my comfort. This is a no judgment zone. But as long as I'm better than you, I won't talk about you. Y'all know that spirit of self-righteousness that runs rampant in the church? How long you been saved? Oh, you're just a baby in Christ. That's one of the, mo that's one of the most frustrating phrases to me that especially older saints say. Do you know when Paul got delivered? He had a Damascus Road experience. And as soon as he had an encounter with God, he set him on a path to literally wreck everything that the world thought it was supposed to be. He started in ministry day one and started turning people around for the gospel. Stop thinking you're better than people because you've been in this longer. You've been lazier longer, but you haven't learned anything. But if I come in with my arms wide open and with my heart wide open and saying, God, you can can use me he can do a miracle in my life so instead of saying stuff like oh you just a baby say let me help you let me teach you what I've learned let me accelerate and help you not fall in the pitfalls that I failed through in this thing see if we're gonna do it we have to change the picture and we got to complete it and so your faith and your actions have to work together Today, you have to decide to make your faith complete. Today, you have to decide that what we believe and what we do is the same thing. You have to decide what they expect and what we export is congruent. Look at James chapter 2. Because some of y'all just looking at me. So when the Bible comes and confirms all this stuff, you're about to see what God is doing to make our faith complete James chapter 2 verse 14 it says what good is it all my brothers and sisters if you say you have faith but you don't show it you say it but you don't show it you come to church but you are not the church you walk around talking about what God can do but you won't participate in what God is doing what good is it if you say it but you don't show it by your actions. Can that kind of faith save anyone? Now, now, I want you to see this because if we think about it as believers, the mission is to save and to seek those who are lost. That's what the Bible says in Luke 19, 10. It says that Jesus came. to he, The whole reason he came was to seek and save those who are lost and when he went to the cross and he gave the ministry to Peter and said upon this rock I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail what he wanted us to do was finish his assignment he wanted us to seek and to save those who were lost so now James is giving us the formula of how we see people saved it's that what we say and what we do is the same thing because people will be saved when they see that from the beginning of our thoughts to the end of our actions Jesus is in the middle of it let me help you when I say as for me in my house we will serve the Lord 
And I say that I'm going to raise my kids to know God and I'm going to love my wife as, uh, as Christ loved the church. I, as I say those things, now, a lot of people say that but cheat on their wives. A lot of people say that and are abusive. But when I say that and then my actions display that, people come to me and they say, man, what, what do I have to do, man, to, to be a father like you're doing? What, what do I have to do? What must I do to be saved? The reason people aren't beating your door down and people are saying church sucks is because what you are saying and what you are doing do not match. You can't talk about, and I'm just going to offend some more people today, and it's okay because I got to say it how God tells me to say it. You cannot promote a sexual movie more than you promote your relationship with God. I can go to your Instagram and find out that you love hip hop and I don't know if you love God. See what you're saying and what you're doing. God, I'll do anything for you. Will you give it up? Whatever it is. Because God says you're stopping me from making you the greatest resource in your area of influence. If I could just get you to believe it, say it, and do it. He said you wouldn't have to ask people to come to church. They'd be asking you to come to church. Because they would see that you say I do everything in excellence. And they see, they know, y'all paid the same salary at that job. And you do everything. You don't leave five minutes early. You stay five minutes late. You're doing everything you do as unto the Lord. They're going to look at you and they're going to say, why is he doing that? You're not doing it for the job. You're doing it because God lives on the inside of you. And whatever your hands find to do, you're going to do it with all of your might. And after five years, when nobody recognized you, then God's going to promote you. And they're going to say, what happened? And they're going to say, no, there, there's something different about them. Because what they say and what they do are the same thing. We have to complete the picture. James chapter 2 verse 15 goes on to say, suppose a brother, he said, because some of y'all don't get it yet. And I love James because James is breaking it down how I have to break it down in this. By the end of this, y'all going to be happy. But right now, everybody's looking like, oh, my God. Did, did I come to the right service today? Yeah, you did. Because God's trying to make everything that you do reflect what he's shown you and what you say. Because at that moment, magic happens. The kingdom of God comes. People get delivered. You walk in purpose. And you reverse church. There are many people that will never come into this building that are around you every day. And if you don't complete the picture... They will never, ever get the right perception about our God. You can invite them to ransom all day. You can bring them to church. But they're watching how you talk about that girl who dresses horrible. And they know one scripture, God is love. And they see you and know it doesn't line up. So when you come... With all your, God is good, God is good, I got a 50 cent raise. They're saying, mm. Because the picture's incomplete. When you come and say, oh, Easter was so, you should have came. You should have been there. Girl, Easter was phenomenal. <laughs> They're saying it must not have worked. Because your attitude is still the same it was before Easter. I know this is hard, and I know it's heavy, but I, I would rather raise up a church that's smaller of people who will actually believe something and do it than a bunch of people who want to feel good about themselves so they come here as a religious duty, but never are what the word says are doers of the word. He says, I don't want you to just hear it. I want you to go and everybody say, do it. Maybe I should have called this um, sermon Nike because you would have got it. Just do it. I love my enemies. Oh, Pastor Mike, don't talk about loving my enemies. Because 
Because if, if I really have to love them, that means I have to let go of them. I, I can't hold unforgiveness and love at the same time. I can't be mad that my daddy left and, and still holding that as a, a, a crutch to use it whenever it comes and really love him. I can tolerate him. I can, I can come to Easter and Christmas. I, I'm, I'm trying to come for the soul today that you would understand that some of these things that the enemy has convinced us that are okay for us to still hold this and hold this, it's not working. What we believe and what we say and what we do has to line up. Look at the next verse in this scripture when we go down. Verse 15 and 16, it says, suppose a brother and sister is without clothes and daily food. If one says to them, go in peace. <laughs> yeah, I know you ain't got no clothes, but go ahead. Keep warm with no clothes. Be well fed with no food. It just told you they had no need, but we ignored their need and just acted like they had it. Amen. They're without clothes and they're without daily food, but we say, go in peace, man. Keep warm. Stay well fed. But does nothing about their physical need. It didn't say pray for them. It, it did not say, you know what, come to church on Sunday. Their need is on Tuesday. And you want them to wait until Sunday to come to a place where you won't be involved in meeting their need? Look, look what it says. What good is it? It says, in the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is. It's what? Y'all wake up because y'all dead. Wake up. See, I need you to hear me say this very clearly. This is where the faith without work scripture comes in. And everybody uses it in the wrong way. Everybody talks about, oh, oh yeah, my faith and my works are acting together. I sowed a seed and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's saying your faith plus good deeds. If you do not have faith and corresponding language, if you do not have faith and corresponding giving, if you do not have faith and corresponding um, um, kindness, he said, your actions are dead. So I wonder how many Christians think they're having effect and aren't doing anything. Your faith is a corpse. It's my responsibility to help us grow. And the reason why they think church sucks is because they're looking at something dead. They're looking at something lifeless. You go from this church to that church and you talk about every pastor and every leader and what you don't like. And then you invite them to your church. It's because when our faith and our actions don't align, the Bible calls it dead. You see those people's marriage on the rocks. You see them. You saw them arguing on their way into church this morning. And what do we do? Mm -mm, mm -mm, I didn't see it. I did not see her. I did not see him slap her. I did not. I do not want to be in the interrogation room. How many of us have seen something and tried to act like we did not see it? I'm not saying that. Y'all are all lying if your hand's not up. You're lying. You see a child get talked to bad or negatively, and all you think in your mind, mm -mm, if those was my kids. And God said, I placed you there to see that to do something. I put one of my agents in place. What if a cop saw a murder, looked at it, and walked away? God said, I called you to be my agent. And daily you walk around seeing people get hurt, get killed, be misused, being abused, and you walk away and you don't want to get involved. He said, so we make the picture incomplete. But he said, if I could get just a few people to say, no, I can't solve it, but I can point you to the one who can. No, I can't be the one to fix it, but I'll be here while it's getting fixed. I'm not the one that's going to change it, but I know the one who can change it. When that happens, our faith becomes complete. Look what the word says in James chapter 2, verse 18. We're just going down this whole thing. It says, now some of you may say, some people have great faith, Pastor Mike. They are faith people. They pray in tongues. They, they deliver. They prophesy. 
And then there's other people that just have good deeds. They're just good people. How many people know some good people? Like just they're good people. They don't pray. They don't prophesy. They don't speak in tongues. They don't do nothing. But they're just good people. He said, but I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I'll show you my faith by my good deeds. You don't have to know I speak in tongues to know I'm a believer. You will know I'm a believer because I treat you right. When you do me wrong, I'm going to do you right. That's how you know I'm a believer. Because my flesh don't want to do you right. But the greater one ah, lives on the inside of me. And when I don't want to be faithful, and when I want to cheat, and when I want to fight, and when I want to steal, the greater one says, "Uh -uh 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 -uh." I will be stronger. Greater is me that is in you than anything in the world. You'll know my faith. By how I treat a person who was just convicted of murder. Yeah, they did it. Yeah, they're about to spend the rest of their life in jail. But will you love them? Will you care? And I'm so passionate about this because I see people who we are the deterrent to the thing that can save them. It's not God. It's us. If you don't hear anything else I say, God is faithful yesterday, today, and forever. But for some reason, he chose to use us to to relay his message. And we keep messing up the message. It's like if God says, it says, Michael, go tell Natalie you love her. I love you, yellow my And she looks crazy. And I said, I told her. What you said, he said, no, no, boy, go tell her I love her. Oh, I got you, I got you. You're not alone yet. (laughs) She still didn't come. What am I supposed to say? He said, you're messing it up in translation. It's not the message he's sending, and it's not the person he's sending it to. And when I have prejudgment and pride in my heart, he says, go tell them that I love them. The walk over to tell them is like them. Do you know? Do you know who that is? Do you know what she did? Uh, she, she's not as good as us. She, she hasn't been saved as long. I know her family. And God says, I didn't ask you to prejudge what I asked you to tell her. I ask you to let her know that I love her. And if we don't get in the way, she never gets the message. Excuse me. If we don't get out of the way, she never gets the message. Who is around you who has not received the message of God because of you? See, so many of us are talking about going and witnessing and all this other stuff. And God said, man, if you would just get out the way, I could witness through you. You wouldn't even have to do the heavy lifting. If you just lived the life I talk about, you would complete the picture. They would get the right perception about me and they would want to know the God that you serve. But they don't want to know the God that we serve because they're on the outside and they see how you treat people on the inside. They see how you talk about other believers. And God said that the way they're going to know I'm real is by your love for one another. Some of y'all look like y'all just drank pickle juice. Y'all just in the... This word has been burning in my heart because if we don't complete the picture, many people will never have eternal salvation. That... The black and white of it is, if your pride is bigger than somebody being saved, you will not give them the message. And so James is telling us right here, don't say you have faith and you have an opportunity to meet a need and you don't meet it. He said, because that doesn't make your faith complete. So point number two, noticing means nothing when contribution is necessary. We notice a lot of stuff, but noticing means absolutely nothing when there's a contribution that is necessary. You see that person who's lonely and they need a friend. 
And you don't go talk to them because their swag doesn't match your click swag. And they're a little outside and they don't know what to do with their hair and they're not in the glam squad and they're not all this other stuff. And God said, I put them in your path so that you could contribute to their life. Noticing they're lonely is not enough. Noticing that they need help is not enough. Noticing that somebody is hurting from the inside is not enough. You have to complete the picture and do something. Verse 18 says, I'll show you my faith by my good deeds. Verse 19 says, you say you have faith for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Good. You know what? There's one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this. And they tremble in terror. How foolish of you. Can't you see that faith without good deeds, everybody say, is useless? Okay. So, so what I'm saying to all my church people who have every scripture memorized and can prophesy from here to Beijing, if you do not allow all the prophecies that you are saying and all the things that you are, 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 are seeing in the spirit and the realms are changing and the warfare and you're mean. God said your faith is incomplete. He said, and I'll keep you at a low level with all your anointing. Because you won't do what you're telling everybody else to do. He said your faith is incomplete. That's why so many churches are small because they see the man of God or the woman of God. And they come in with an entourage and sitting on tables and chairs and all this other stuff. And they tell you to serve, but they won't serve. Their faith is incomplete. You're going to tell us to come to the prayer meeting and you never show up for the prayer meeting? If you want to meet us here tomorrow night for Synergy Prayer, guess who you will see praying? I will be right here with the mic praying. Our pastors will be praying because I can't ask you to do something that God has not already started working on me. Because at the point that somebody sees that, that does not believe, they'll say his faith is incomplete. He got faith, but he doesn't have corresponding action. And they get the wrong perception. Can I be real? We're doing this thing called Financial Peace University here at the church where people are getting their finances in order. See, it would be wrong of me to tell you to go through something. And there's some areas in my finances that I'm trying to tighten up. So what did God say to do? He said, you go through Financial Peace University too. I said, huh? <laughs> I don't, you want me to do it? I had some friends in the church that bought it for me and Natalie. And now... They, they do it in a class on Sunday nights, but me and Natalie at the house watching our DVDs. Why? Because my faith would be incomplete if I talk about how God is a provider and that he wants to work in your finances and he wants us to be good stewards of our money. But I won't do what I'm saying my faith is supposed to do. He said it will be incongruent. And one day people will be able to see that what he's saying and what he's doing is not lining up. And it makes our faith look weak. Puts a bad picture on our God. So I'm just asking you in your area of influence, please don't just see it. Please do something. Be the love of God. Show the love of God. Heal wounds that need to be healed. Give words of encouragement. Love your enemies. Give when it doesn't make sense. Stay when you're offended. communicate when there's a problem that's what because nothing in you wants to do that that's when God right when you in God begins when you in God begins when I don't want to do right that's where God takes over where I want to cuss you out that's where he holds my tongue that when I want to spend the money on the shoes that's when he tells me to say I'm trying to make your faith practical. The reason they think the church sucks is because we're saying stuff that we don't have results in. That's why the number two thing that people say is the church is hypocritical. That is the number two reason why people think church sucks is because they're a bunch of hypocrites. And the truth is, it's right. 
You heard it here first. Most churches, most pastors are hypocrites because most of what they say to do, they do not do themselves. And when we do that, we damage the vision. So, Pastor Mike, what do we do? We don't start with the church, the organism or an organization. We don't start with everybody. Guess who we get to start with? The organism. Somebody say, I'm the church. I'm the church. I'm the church. So now you love people when it hurts. You forgive people when it's ugly. You keep praying for them after they misuse you. Be the church. Most people will never do it because of my last point. They don't want to use the S word. Sacrifice. (laughs) To complete the picture, you're going to have to sacrifice. And this is the great thing. Sacrifice authenticates righteousness. And many people are like, what does that mean, Pastor Mike? When you sacrifice, authenticate means it proves that you're right with God. When you sacrifice, it proves that you're right with God. See, sacrifice is an act of giving up something valued for the sake of something else regarded as more important or worthy. So what do you have in your life of value? Time, money, energy, connections, comfort, material things that you would be willing to give up for something more valuable. Most of us won't give up our time. It's a hard press for a lot of people to give up their Sunday morning to come to church. It's a hard press for somebody to give up their time to help somebody. Okay, now you guys see the people that are on the street a lot of times begging for money or the people that stand outside a quick trip and they're asking for money. There's some of us that I mean, we are pre-programmed if they even look your direction. (laughs) Y'all, I mean, it's like a a natural reaction that your head goes down and you start walking faster. You ignore and you just keep going. And it's been like that for 15 years. Okay. But what if one of those situations was real? What if God placed it on your heart to really help somebody? We're so pre-programmed and we're busy and we got to get somewhere to watch a television show that comes on at 8 o'clock and we got TiVo anyway and we won't give up anything. We will not sacrifice. I won't sacrifice my time. I won't sacrifice my effort. I won't sacrifice my money. And God says, if you are going to complete the picture, it's going to take sacrifice. And he said, Most of you won't sacrifice time, but Abraham sacrificed what I promised him. (laughs) We won't sacrifice money, but what if it was the thing you had been waiting for for a hundred years? And then God asked you to sacrifice it. That's what it says in the bottom of this, James chapter 2, verse 21. It says, don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar he was willing to sacrifice what he waited a hundred years for experienced for a few years and God said can I have it back and he was so full of faith that he wasn't like well God I I prayed for this and I believed you for this and you brought it to me so (laughs) I think you missed the wrong that I'm Abraham now I used to be Abram I think you're looking for Abram again I'm Abraham and and he, he but he said no my faith is so complete That in front of all of these people, I'm about to show them who my God is. My faith is not fickle. My faith is not almost there. He says it's complete. It's so complete that I will sacrifice the one thing I thought I would never get. To be in right relationship with you. Are you willing to sacrifice your reputation to be in right relationship with God? Are you willing to sacrifice finances? To be in right relationship with God. Are you willing to sacrifice comfort. To be in right relationship with God. It's what Abraham did. And look what it says. It says verse 22. You see his faith. And his actions did what? Worked together. And his actions made his faith complete. Anytime you see a circle from now on, that's God trying to tell you, make your faith complete. 
when you walk up to a stoplight and you see three circles and you're waiting at a red light and then it turns green, that's God giving you the green light. Make your faith complete. Make it complete. Make, make it complete. I want to challenge you. That they're not coming in here until they see it out there. <laughs> I don't care what you say. We could pay people to come in and receive the word. And it can be God himself sitting in this room. And people would still be like, nah, I ain't coming. I, I know 2,000 years. We've been waiting on this show for 2,000 years. But I ain't, I'm not coming because you fake. Because you lie. Because you're hurtful. And if we're going to be the reverse church and take away the stigma and the perception that church sucks, then we're going to have to complete the picture. This week, don't allow what you believe and how you act to leave the picture incomplete. I don't care how much you pray and prophesy. Be nice. I, I don't care how many songs you write. And how many people you've helped in the past. Help the one who can't help you. The one who's not a stepping stone for your career. Go encourage that boss who's mean, but you know they're under all kinds of stress. And a word of encouragement from you could change. It could complete the circle. You at the gym pumping out all day and everybody else playing they booty pop music and thugs on thugs and we killing people everywhere, blah, 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 And they everybody getting hype. They ain't even rapping no more. How to get up at the fan eye. It's like I'm about to get the fan eye. with a banana. Like what? Sounds like the zoo. <laughs> but, but they're playing all of this stuff. And God's waiting for somebody to boldly walk up in there with their worship music on. And say, my strength comes from something different. I don't have to get enraged to be able to be my best. There's a greater one that lives. I'm not saying you can't listen to some things that get you hype. But what I'm saying is if that's the only thing you're presenting, it paints a picture. It's not complete that God is your source, but you go to other things that go against his word to get. You see how few claps because people convicted. They like. Mm. I don't want to be that hypocrite. But guess what? We have the power of God on the inside of us to change anything. In our life. So I'm asking you, complete the picture. When everybody comes in contact with you, they should know that we really have a true relationship with God. And we are the reverse church because we're going to complete the picture. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for every person that's in this room. I thank you, Father, that even as they stand in this place right now and they the hearing your word. I'm thanking you, Father, you're showing us the areas in our heart that may not be congruent. Some of us are self-righteous and think we're better than everybody, but God, we all needed your grace. God, some of us, Father God, have been looking at ourselves as unqualified and nobody can be helped by me. But you said, Father God, that you, you take the foolish things and confound the wise. You take the ones that nobody else thinks about and you make the greatest impact. Use us, God. To complete the picture. Make our faith complete because our actions and our faith are going to line up. Father, no longer will the people around us think that church sucks. Not because we're going to compromise, but we're going to make it complete. God, we're going to love but not judge. We're going to have a standard, Father God, but not, not bash other people for not being at that place, Father. We are going to have conviction, but we're not going to condemn. And I thank you as we become the reverse church, the true church that you called us to be, so many people are coming to you. We trust you. Father, when it's hard to sacrifice, we thank you that you'll help us by remembering the greatest sacrifice ever made. When you hung on the cross 
because you knew we needed you. On a maybe, you went to the cross. And so today, Father, no sacrifice is even worth being compared to the sacrifice you made. So let us sacrifice for others as you sacrifice for us. And I declare that this group of people is going to complete the picture. In Jesus' name, we agree. We agree? Amen. Let's give God some praise.